Yo, what's up everybody, it's Brilly, and I've got a quick tip for you today on how to make your renders drastically better in Octane in five minutes or less. Let's do it. So today's quick tip, we're jumping into Cinema 4D and I wanna talk about the Octane camera tag. If you are not jumping into the Octane camera tag and doing everything you can possibly do here to manipulate this final image, you are missing out on one of the most amazing aspects of Octane Render and creating beautiful 3D renders directly inside of 3D. Let me just show you a little bit of what this render would have looked like without any post effects applied to it in the Octane camera tag. There it is, the difference of before and after. So let me just walk you through what exactly I did in here and what I want you to start looking at for every single one of your render frames using purely the Octane camera tag. Let's go. So the first thing I did was I came into the camera imager. Let's enable that. This is typically the first place I'll jump into, into my Octane camera tag. And I'll start messing with the exposure, highlight compression, and gamma. Those are my two, my three first things. And so I will go right into the exposure. And I'm looking at this, I would like to increase the overall exposure, maybe bring out some of these highlights here. So I'm gonna just start raising this up. You know, I don't wanna blow it out too much. However, I do wanna increase this decent. And then even if it's blowing out a little bit here where I'm starting to lose a little bit of that visible interest, right? It's starting to just kind of get a little bit too bright. I then jump right to the highlight compression. And this is one of my best friends here inside of the Octane camera tag. And I will just bring this up. And you can see as I slide this back and forth. Now there is some sort of like, nice highlight that I do like to have, but I don't want it to feel like it's just overpowering. The top portion of this piece is not really what I want to be the central focus. You know, it's really the entire shape that I'd like to be kind of the central focus. So I'll just bring this up a little bit. And again, that's just the taste. Now I would like to get a little bit more contrast in here. So I usually like to play with the gamma a little bit on that. So I'll mess with that and bring this gamma down. Now you can see that uh, with this, I'm able to get just a little bit more contrast out of it. Maybe something like that is pretty good. Then, you know, with something like this, where it's like this gold metal, you know, I might be getting a lot of hot pixels in there because I do have an emissive light here or emissive texture here and emissive texture here. And I see some hot pixels in there. Boom. You got to go right into that hot pixel removal and bring this down. I will say with the hot pixel removal, if you go too low, it will tend to soften up some of your details. So I highly recommend not just dropping it down. Now, if you're doing something that doesn't really require a ton of really fine, sharp, details you can go really low and I have done that before however with something like this I do have a lot of information and I notice if I have a lot of information in here in detail I can really bring this down to 0.45 without ever noticing any visual difference in those details so no less decay on that that fine detail occasionally I'll jump in and add a little bit of vignette in this scene, the background's black. The vignette's not really just, it's just not gonna do enough for me to even try to play with that or wanna play with that. All right, cool. Uh, I will probably jump back in here and do some AI, uh, special AID noiser as well. The next tab, especially for this that I wanna go into is the post-processing because I do have these glowing orbs back here. So I will check that on. And you can see instantly, I am getting a little bit of bloom coming from these areas and a little bit of glare coming from those highlighted points. But let's push this a little bit. Let's bring this bloom value up, right? And now we can actually get some nice glow and like almost like fake um, atmosphere into this scene from that glow. So I'll just bring this, this value up a little bit and then we can start looking at the cutoff here. So basically right now what the bloom is going to do is it's going to look at the hottest highlights in my scene and it's going to try to add some bloom to that. Well, maybe I don't want this gold center shape to get much bloom because there are some hot highlights on this where the light is interacting with that texture and material that will begin to bloom some of that shape as well. Some of my spheres that are on the outside of my scene. So this cutoff, you can play with kind of basically the threshold of this bloom. So you can see if I just jack it up uh, really quickly here that really I'm removing it entirely from my object. So I'm just gonna move this up to maybe about one. And that kind of removes that bloom and glow away from the main subject matter here. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. In this case, I'm going to kind of pull that back and remove it. 
Now I'm going to add some glare in here as well. And the glare is going to give me kind of these nice little uh, light streaks that come through here. Very, very cool. Now, if you're doing a really stylized render, sometimes these really sharp streaks work great. Typically, though, I have a tendency to kind of pull these back a little bit. So I don't go too extreme on it. And then we have the glare amount control, which we can add in here and give how many that we want. I'm actually just going to do something a little more sleek, you know, just two. This is very stylized piece right now. However, I don't want to go this stylized. So a lot of times I'll add a little blur in here as well. So I'll add a little bit of blur just to soften that up. Doesn't have to be a ton, right? Just to make it so it's not so sharp. And this to me always makes it feel just a little bit more natural. So I'll do and land somewhere in that area. And now to give even more flavor to this, you know, I'll mess with this spectral intensity. So this spectral light here, you can actually increase this and really kind of mess around. Now I don't want to go too extreme here, but let's bring it up to something like this and then that spectral shift so you can kind of shift the color value and hue of that spectral uh, color so i like it something like this where it's adding this little orange around the red this little halo here and where it's adding almost like a little bit of magenta around the blue i think that looks kind of cool and then maybe mess with the angle of this layer let's get something that's maybe a little bit more angled in here maybe even something just like at a 45 degree angle i think that's kind of cool it gives us this really sleek look and now let's hop into the thin lens and let's play with the depth of field. Let's just jack this aperture up. I'm going to go to like 22. I don't know. We'll see here in a second. I do have the autofocus on. Typically, the autofocus isn't picking what I want it to pick. Uh, but this case, it, it, it is. So I really like to jump around in my scene a lot too. And so right now, I do have the pick focus turned on in my live viewer. And this is amazing because this makes it so I can interactively click and pick a focus just by clicking on that object here in the live viewer. So I'm going to do that. And you can see the focal depth changes every time I click. And I just want this object here, this gold, cool displacement object that I made to be front and center. Now, the next thing we want to do is play around with the aperture a little bit let's get some really interesting bokeh here especially since we're using this crazy uh aperture here of 22 centimeters let's play around with that what that aperture and bokeh looks like so i'll increase the aperture edge maybe bring it up to like a value of two or something like that mess around with the blade count if you want i'm going to keep it at six I like how uh, blade count of six looks here, especially if I rotate this a little bit. Uh, we'll look at this in a second, and I'm going to bring the roundness way down, way, way down. And you'll see that I'm definitely going to need a little bit more samples in this scene. But this now is giving me this really cool aperture where I'm getting these really sharp lines, and it's almost you know, creating this graphical pattern back here. It almost makes me want to put a lot more other spheres in the background further back that just can bulk it out like this because that's such a nice look and uh, addition to my scene here. Uh, and then again, like I said, you can mess with the rotation. I'm actually pretty happy though with where that rotation is right now of the aperture. And now just like that, we have really set up this render. If I were to add in a new Octane camera here and look through it, there we go. We have literally transformed this final render by doing nothing else but by going into the Octane camera and adjusting these settings from A to B. So now I hope the next time you're in Octane, you jump into this camera and really manipulate it and get that final image result that you want. Now, the only next step I have is to bring this in, open my render settings, and let's export this because I'm going to be rendering this on the render network. If you haven't seen my latest tutorial on uploading to the render network, definitely watch that. You're going to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of hassle rendering out your 3D scenes. All right, I hope you found that tip helpful. It has saved me numerous times, and now I barely composite anymore. I do everything using the Octane camera. All right, see you soon.